This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Okay, good Erev Shabbos, everyone. Um, I'm very honored and grateful to be in this uh, beautiful community. This is my first time in Columbus, Ohio. I've been in the state of Ohio, um, but I've never been in the capital. So it's really a pleasure to meet all of you. It's an honor to meet you. And I just want to share with you a brief thought before we uh, accept upon ourselves the Holy Shabbos. So this week we have a very dramatic confrontation between Korach and Moshe Rabbeinu. And of course, Korach does not, the story does not end well, well for him. He gets swallowed by the ground. And then of course the Jewish com- people come to Moshe and they complain. They said, Atem hamiten asam Hashem. You're killing the people. And that, pr- that created even greater plague. And people are continuing to die. So the Pasuk says that Aaron had us put an end to this Magefa. So there's a very interesting Pasuk. The Pasuk says, mm-hmm. You had people who were dying. And it was spreading. And Aaron came, Aaron Akon came, and he stood. Mm-hmm. He stood between the dead and the living. And the plague stopped. So we take this literally, that Aaron HaKoyin positioned himself. He's standing between the dead and the living. And all of a sudden, nobody died anymore. What exactly did Aaron HaKoyin do? What does it mean, he stood between the dead and the living? So I'm going to share with you an idea from a personality who we perhaps have heard about. I doubt you ever heard a Dvar Torah from this personality. This was a great Mekobal, a great mystic, who lived in Israel and Netivot. But originally he came from Morocco, Risani. I actually was just at his house in Morocco. The Baba Sali. You ever hear the Baba Sali? The Praying Father. Was a great mystic. His father, Rav Masud, passed away when the Baba Sali was only 18 years old. The Baba Sali becomes the Rosh Yeshiva, and the uh, Av Bezdin in Sali. And ultimately he comes to Israel, he made three attempts, and then he permanently settled there. And the Baba Sali makes the following observation. And this is a very important observation. Every morning we say, in the beginning of Sukkot de Zimra, we say, in Mizmar Sheh Chanukah Sabay David. We say, God, Ma Betza Bidami. What benefit will you have if I die? Beridati al shachas, if I descend to the pit. Hayoy decha afar. Who's going to thank you? Will the dust thank you? We say to God, if I, go, if I die, who's going to thank you? That's interesting. If a person is not here anymore, they can't do anything. So why of all the things that we single out, do we say, Rebbe Shalom, keep me alive, because if I'm not alive, I can't thank you. I also can't play ping pong, I can't play professional football, and I can't eat kugel. So why do we focus on the fact that if a person dies, they th- can't thank Hashem? Does this Pasuk sound familiar? Loi ha-mesim yahalaluka. The dead can't thank God. No kidding. You know, a lot of things the dead can't do. The dead can't eat poppers. Why do we say the dead can't thank God? Dead people can't do anything. Or we say in Shemona Esrei, V'chol ha-chayim, Yaidu chasala. All the living, thank you. What do we learn from this? That thanking Hashem is not just a function of life. Thanking Hashem is the very definition of life. What does it mean to be alive? What does it mean? How do you define life? Is life defined as respiratory activity? Is life defined as brain activity? In the eyes of the Torah, the definition of life is thanking Hashem. The Medrash tells us, why are the wicked... Remember this Gemara? The wicked, even when they're alive, they're considered dead. Remember that Gemara? (coughs) The Medrash says, you know why the wicked are considered dead even when they're alive? Because they wake up in the morning, they see the sun, and they don't say, God, 
Thank you for the sun. It feels good when the sun shines on me. It makes vitamins on my skin. It kills bacteria on my skin. It gives energy to the plants. Thank you, God, for the sun. But Jewish people wake up every morning and the longest blessing we say the whole day is Yoid Serar. It's the longest blessing in our whole liturgy. We don't let a day go by without thanking God for the sun. You know why? Because if you don't thank Him for the sun, you're not alive. The definition of life is thanking Hashem. In fact, we know there are four people who have to bring a special karban, a karban toida. They have to bench goimel. You remember who they are? Somebody who was sick and was healed. Someone who was in jail and was freed. Someone who crossed the sea. Someone who went through the desert. The word chayim, ches, yud, yud, mem, is an acronym, Rashi Tevos. The four people who have to thank God. Ches, choyli, one who was ill. Yud, yam, one who crossed the sea. Yud, Yisurim, someone who was um, in jail. Mem, Midbar, one who crossed the desert. Chayim, what does Chayim mean? What does life mean? Life means thanking HaKadosh Baruch Hu. That's where the word life comes from. It stands for the four people who have to thank HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Says the Baba Sali, Vaya'amoid, Bein HaMesim, Uvein HaChayim. Vayamo literally means he stood, but it has another meaning as well. To be oymed, to stand, means to probe, to think about. Aaron made the following argument to God. God, vayamo, Aaron thought, bein hameisim ubein achayim. What's the difference between death and life? And the difference Aaron said was, if one is not alive, they can't thank Hashem. So Aaron was asserting the following argument. God, if you continue to take the people, they won't be able to thank you. You wouldn't want that. Aaron was saying to God, Loi hamesim yahaleluka. If you take any more, they won't be able to thank you. And this is always an important uh, objective in life. We always have to think to ourselves, what part of our life, how much of our life, is dedicated to offering thanks to HaKadosh Baruch I'm going to just close with one story. There's a guy in Jerusalem. He's down on his luck. He has five girls. The oldest is 28. He can't move them out of the house. He can't marry them off. And then he has a study partner who... His daughter got engaged. So he has to pay for the wedding, but he couldn't afford it. So he took out a loan and uh, he asked his friend to be the co-signer on the loan. The guy who took out the loan, he defaulted on the loan. They come to uh, the guy with the five daughters to take away his house because he was the co-signer of the loan. So now, he has five kids, he can't move them out of the house, and he lost his house. He doesn't know what to do. He's, all, he's down in the dumps. So somebody says, you know, there's a rabbi in Jerusalem, you should speak with him, maybe he could help you. Well, who, which rabbi is that? The Gera Rebbe. The Beis Yisrael. This is back in the, in the 50s. So he goes to speak to the Ger Rebbe. And the Ger Rebbe asked him, Do you thank Hashem? And he's like, Well, start with him. Do I thank I came to you because I have problems. Why are you telling me to thank Hashem? Well, me thank Him for what? I have five kids. I can't marry them off. I don't have any money. Don't tell me to thank Hashem. And then the Ger Rebbe told him the following formula that to me was like a revolutionary game changer when it comes to tefillah. The Ger Rebbe said, probably when you pray, you spend the majority of your emotional energy asking God for what you need. You know, I need health, I need happiness, I need success, I need livelihood. No, you're making a big mistake. Use the following formula, 60-40. 60% thank, 40% ask. And that was the end of the conversation. And as you can imagine, this man applied this new formula and his uh, fortune changed shortly after his first daughter got engaged and then within a year he married off three of his kids and then his friend got a big uh, inheritance so he was able to get his house back. And then he was looking at the Hallel prayer and in the Hallel prayer he noticed 
that out of the ten declarations we make, we say, Haidu Lashem Kitaiv Kili Oilam Chastai six times. Haidu Lashem Kitaiv Oilam Chastai, and after Yoy Marna, we say again, Haidu Lashem Kitaiv, then again, Haidu, then again, Haidu, then we say, Ano Hashem Haishiana, Ano Hashem Haishiana, request, Ano Hashem Hatzlichana, Ano Hashem Hatzlichana, request, and then again, Haidu, Haidu. So out of the ten, Major statements in the Hallel. Six are declarations of gratitude, and four are requests from Hashem. Most of us, when we pray, we may have a laundry list of things that we ask of God. And yet, when it comes to the Moidim, somehow the enthusiasm wanes a little bit. It's very interesting, you know, the Gemara tells us somebody who doesn't bow by Moidim. After 120, the spine turns into a snake. That's what the Gemara says. So we have to try to understand what's the secret of, the, of what the Talmud is telling us. We know the snake represents Misa, death. The definition of life is gratitude. So we have to use our spine to thank Hashem. Otherwise, we're not fully alive. The definition of life in the eyes of the Torah, in the eyes of David HaMelech, is Loi HaMesim Yahalaluka. The dead can't thank Hashem. If we want to experience life to its fullest, if we want to experience every day to its fullest, we should make sure that every day is infused with great gratitude to Hashem. And then that will be an insurance and an assurance that Hashem continues to bless us with all the blessings that we ask Him for. So it's uh, wonderful really to meet you, wonderful to uh, have the opportunity to spend Shabbos together with you. We look forward uh, to uh, learning together. Thank you for hosting me, and everyone should have a wonderful Shabbos. Thank you. You've just experienced another Torah class, brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.